You're listening to Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. Truly Unruly with Marcus and Jessica Trufant. I'm your host. My name is Kel. Marcus, Jessica Trufant. What's up? How you guys doing? Good. What's up, brother? What's Tired. good? Oh, my. Damn. She's yawning. She's yawning. I know. How are you, Kel? I'm good, man. I've been good. Things have been good here in the desert. How's everything in the Northwest? How are the kids? How's life? Really? Well. Really good? Well, and... Um, a bit overwhelming for me, if I'm going to be honest about what the kids and end it's of school over- well, end of parties. School, it's and, like, uh, it, that's a full time job. Everything, sports, et cetera. It's becoming a bit much for me. But uh, together, we can conquer all. We can conquer all. Um, <sighs> yeah, good. I just took my 14-year-old, Kamora, to get her nose pierced yesterday. Mm-hmm. She's been asking for a couple of years she now. She thinks she's cute. I know she thinks she's the shit and she's getting ready to go into high school and I don't think it's that big of a deal. So it's really cute. You guys are the cool parents. We are. I no, it's not even about being the cool parents. It's like No, you're the cool parents. Take your nose ring out. Yeah. It's on you now. It's on her to maintain it and to take care of it. Right. And And a lot of uh, jobs are becoming more accepting of having piercings. So my thing is, in the future, if it doesn't work out, just take the shit out. Well, when she pulls up to high school, the freshman year nose ring, she's going to be the shit. Because I remember when I was in high school, there was this one dude who had, like, a tattoo. And he was, like, 15. And we were like, yo, son got a tattoo. Like, and it was a nice tattoo, like, on his forearm. And I was like, he's the fucking yeah. man. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, Kel, it's 2023. Everybody has a nose piercing in high school. Do they? Everybody. My kids ain't in high Seriously. school yet, so I have no idea. Oh. I'm I'm, dis- I'm totally They're fully like tatted up. Yeah. Fully. A lot of the boys on the hoop team and yes, stuff, a lot of guys fully got tatted tats, up. football team, yep. All the girls have nose yeah, rings. Yeah, I remember so like some right seniors in. and like juniors and some seniors like being tatted up and stuff like yeah, that. I don't feel like nobody had tattoos when I was in high school. Nobody had tattoos yeah. really? when nah. I was in high school. No. I wanted oh, to talk no. to you guys about something kind of serious today. Um, I wanted to talk about today's beauty standards and if they've gotten, if we think, or you guys think, if they've gotten out of hand. Um, I know we've all heard about uh, Jackie O, um, DC Flies, uh, the mother of his kids and girlfriend who passed away um, in her hotel room after uh, she had her, her mommy makeover. Now, mm-hmm. all the details hasn't haven't come out, so I don't, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, the mommy makeover is the reason why this, this poor young lady passed away, this mother passed away. But um, it's just, th- this isn't the first time we've heard things like this in the news and headlines. Kanye West's mom, you know, she had gotten work done and didn't know that she had a heart condition, and she ended up, you know, passing away while under the knife mm-hmm. and things like that. So my question is, is, like I said in the beginning, Do we think the beauty standards are getting out of hand? And then what can us as men, like, you know, the spouses, the boyfriends, the husbands, the baby daddies, what can we do to help support our women so they don't feel, I don't know, indifferent about themselves when they have, when their bodies change after having kids and things like that? The standard of beauty, I personally believe, was started by men. Men have controlled women and, you know, told them how to act, how to be, they need to be housewives and do this and do that and dress a certain way and all of this kind of stuff. And then they started posing in magazines and they were objectifying women and their bodies. And I think it just, it spiraled into what it is today. And now we've talked about this before. Women judge women super harshly and each other's bodies very harshly. And we also, you know, just the culture. And I, I'm sorry, I blame the men a lot of the time. I want a woman that's this. I need a woman that has a, you know, a fat ass, a small waist, like all of these things. And this shit is... This shit has been happening. 
Plastic surgery has been, this is not a new phenomenon. Women have been doing it for decades. Now, I just think there's been an advancement. It's widely advertised. Who's doing the most plastic surgery? Men. Who are encouraging women? Oh, you don't like men. So are you talking about the men doctors or are you saying the men doctors? Most of the plastic surgeons, the people that are coming up with all this shit, this is men. Mm. It's men and it's a business. And I just think it's, it is really sad. And I know there's not really any uh, concrete details for Jackie O's death, but I know the pressure to look a certain way, especially when you're in the spotlight, is heavy. And it's super sad because nobody really, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. I've fallen victim to that. I, you know, I want to be smaller. I want to be this. I want to be that. I wanted bigger boobs because I had breastfed my kids down to nubs, <laughs> my boobs. And so I went and I got implants and that backfired. And it's just, I don't know. It's sad that we are not taught to fully embrace and love our bodies. And yes, I said men um, are a huge part of the reason why women view themselves differently. But I think it's just, especially now, it's just the culture. And that's how it is. You have to, you can't be a size eight. You have to be a size six. You have to have that tiny waist and that big fucking ass or big ginormous titties. And so... I don't know. I would agree. I would agree with a lot of that. And um, just like you said, there's really no getting around it. The way the culture is now and what's hot and what's kind of the fad, this is where we're at now. And, and it is uh, it's kind of it is what it is. But where I find the issue is, is that there's so much. Um, what's the term? Uh, it's so easily access ability. Right. As far as doctors, you got good doctors, you got bad doctors and you got all this stuff in between right and so it's men doctors you're not hearing women going and getting i don't know if BBLs that matters though from, well it, i don't know if that matters that it's men doing the work but it's a a business and it's a, a market for that everybody on the planet everybody on social media wants to look a certain way so this there there's if um, women were doing it a market there wouldn't be that many that. people dying if if women, women were doing the work, were do, was doing the work. A I woman don't know knows if you can say that. I don't know if you can say body. that. Men don't understand. They don't know when to stop. That's why they be putting these fucking ginormous implants. They're trying to give people what they in want. In women, putting fucking and what, what what were they putting in women's butts, injecting <laughs> fucking tar and. I poison. think the majority of doctors are men. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's just a number. So naturally there's going to be more men that are doing the work, but I don't know if, if a woman, a uh, woman did the work, that means that it would be a better job because she knows a woman's body. I don't know if I agree with that. I do. But um, again, there, the market is so heavy and the need is so strong. Like the, the game is the wild, wild west right now though. Everybody's doing it. There's, you know, all different scales of right. everybody skill wants to level look and all this type of stuff, though. But nobody, right? Everybody don't have the means, though. So I think that's where the regulations and all that kind of stuff have to come into play. I don't know all the details about it, but it's a business. To me, it seems like yes, money it's is money over. driving this thing and preying upon people's want to to fit in and people to please. The insecurities, yes, and pleasing the masses, especially if you're in the limelight. It's tough to be on TV, to be on social media and take the ridicule if you don't look like the prototype that people are calling the prototype, which really ain't the prototype, which is fake in most That's situations. What I'm saying. We don't even know what it is to like, I, it's, it's almost like it's not acceptable to just be normal and natural you have to the lines are blurred now though what's normal is made to 
um, it is made to look or, or feel like this is what normal is. Everybody that's on TV looks a certain way, right? right. That's normal, but so that's not facts, though. So that's where the teaching has to come into play when you got young kids on you, social. Social media blew this shit completely out of the water. Information travels too fast nowadays. Completely so, out yeah. of the water. And every time you scroll up, you see a bitch with a... Weren't we talking about a zero gravity waist? You were talking about that. I said I didn't know what that was. <laughs> I don't know. I just I like the yeah. term. I, I a waist that is the size of a toddler's <laughs> and an ass that's the size of an elephant. And we see all of the attention they're getting, all the accolades, all the people, and all I, the money she can make too. All the money, right? and I don't think there is. Do what you do, right, to your body. But I think it's unfortunate that now it's like if you don't look like that or if you're normal or it, normal, I, what is normal anyway? Um, there's just a lot of pressure. And even you know what? on women, even if you're not in Hollywood, there's a lot of pressure to look a certain way. And my point is we've always felt this pressure. Dudes are walking around here fucking beer guts. Different pressures. So like, we can discuss that later. Different pressures, though. So. Yeah. Really? Are you guys going and injecting your asses because they they're small? It don't have to be asses. It don't have to be calves. No, it don't have no, to be I abs. But if. I got are you. you guys? No, what men are doing, and I've known about three or four men that have passed away from this, is that men are doing things like taking steroids. That's mm. what they're doing. They're doing therapy replacement hormone therapy replacement and trt and and stuff like that granted people guys that are dying from it are people that are abusing it but you know there's men that fall into the same pressure of i want to be big i want to have muscles you know you you go on you can scroll on instagram and you can see oh you can take this uh, this pill that that will raise your testosterone levels or this that right. will that will uh, give you more human growth hormone and stuff like that. So, I mean, there's dudes that fall into the same that, that fall into the same thing. Um, right. I, I get that. I do get that. I want to be big. I want to have muscles. Right. OK, that's fine. But for women, we you know, I want to be skinny. I want to have a small waist. I want to have a big butt. I want to have breasts. I want to have the proper nose. I need to have the proper this. I need to have high cheekbone. Like it's it's pretty fucked up for women. To be fair, there are women out there. There there are teams or uh, groups or um, producers of musicians or artists or whatever. It's a business investment. The woman it necessarily is. doesn't have to fall victim to these things of a uh, society, but okay, I want to make this amount. I want to have this amount of reach. Okay. I'm going to do this makeover thing. And it's just an investment, right? It's a, uh, um, it's on purpose. It's a uh, um, plan and it's structured. Okay. I'm going to attack what, people view as being the perfect woman. I'm going to build myself up like this and I'm going to go get the bag. And that's just another way around it. Right. It, it doesn't have to be all like the mental side of it. I don't like myself, but I'm going to make this investment because I'm trying to get it to can, the money. It can go either way, but I think a lot of it is because it's not just people that are trying to make money. People literally do not like the way they look do not like themselves. And what I, we were watching a show with, I don't know if it was a love and hip hop show, but the producer was like, you need an ass or you need more. And <laughs> they go out and get more because <laughs> it, it's a cold, cold fucking <laughs> game. And I don't think that. Do you compare that to like being a model um, runway, you got too much ass or you're too thick. So you need to lose Same. weight it's or you're an athlete. You, you're not built up enough. You're not strong enough. So you're unnaturally, you might do some steroids or whatever, whatever there's, there's pressures all over the place and there's standards set for certain industries, but what is but too it much, always I guess okay is what we're saying 
for men, majority of men to be themselves. It has pretty much never been okay. We've right. been, this is you know, crucified for, you know, back then, if you weren't completely covered up, now it's, when you're covered up, you're like, what are you doing? You're not showing enough skin. You're not doing, it's just like, I think everybody's just really, really confused. And again, there is a lot of pressure and you don't really think about it when you go in to have this stuff done, the risks. And I know getting a Brazilian butt lift, that is the most dangerous surgery Mm -hmm. as far as cosmetic that you can do because when they're injecting the fat into your butt um what can happen is they can go too deep and puncture a blood vessel Mm. which causes a clot now somebody go ahead and correct me if i'm wrong Mm an embolism and it travels to your heart oh, wow. yeah, and your yeah. lungs because it got into the artery or whatever because there's a lot of vessels and all that kind of stuff in your butt. Right. And um, when you are in the wrong hands and you're persuaded by mostly men doctors. Well, there's risk with everything. There's risk. So it doesn't have to be the wrong hands all the time. It could be a perfectly good doctor, but there's risks with every There are risks, but a perfectly good doctor probably hasn't killed somebody doing... Good good doctors don't do BBLs, last I checked. And and a lot of doctors, I was reading that, a lot of doctors will not perform BBLs Mm. just because of the risk. So So here's the other thing with that, is that I'm hearing what you guys are saying, and you guys are right and i'm not going against anything that you're saying but like i think another part of this too is like you look at people going to places like miami to get this kind of work done now you have to think about the healthcare system in a place like florida right you have a ton of unlicensed doctors you have Mm -hmm. doctors that get their degree from some weird island in the caribbean and then get a business license or and, and, and they have some other doctor on their license that can write prescriptions so if you think about like the the Miami Florida plastic surgery game it's super shady down there it's like you can get the work done you want to get the work done fine low key like you can't cut corners you can't cut corners when it comes to somebody cutting your body open you see so like people will go and they'll do this medical tourism and they'll go to like Panama they'll go to Colombia they'll go mm-hmm. to the, the, the to the DR or something like that and have some just random unlicensed person in some basement cut them open and and do this stuff to them so i think that just speaks to our society right so so part of it is that too where it's like well i want it so bad i want it so bad i want i I rather pay less and run the risk of 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 catastrophic failure and something happen you know what i'm saying instead of like all right well let me get all my ducats lined up and just pay what it is that i need to pay to get right. whatever done is done because there are a lot of doctors that when you get work done they'll say even with like breast implants they're like i'm not going to go any bigger like you want them this big we can't go that big because it's not mm-hmm. going to look right on your body mm-hmm. and it's going to hurt your body i'm not going to go that big i'm not going to go their bigger names because- attached to it exactly well, that well, you know what but, but there are a lot of doctors who are about their coin of course and will put a big ass ginormous implant into a woman. And even these doctors out here giving like, like in your right mind, cause you see these women on Instagram whose butts are. They got 20 million followers too. Massive. Well, and it's like, we, what heard. doctor was like, well, all right, that's cool. But, that's sa- that's safe. We're no, going to do no, that right. for you. you no, know, you're right, Jess. But my thing is, let's get away from that. Let's get to, like, the women that are getting work done that, you know, they're not on Instagram trying to do mm-hmm. extra shit. It's like, you know, it's a guy's wife or that just had a kid or, you know, someone's fiance who just, like, for instance, here's a quote. 
from Jackie O, which she did, this is from the LA Times, when she was interviewed in 2017 by DJ Smalls, uh, she opened up about her pregnancy and her love for her children and the pressure to snap back after having children. She said, quote, I looked in the mirror and said, damn, I need to lose some damn weight because my stomach is looking crazy. But y'all know what happens. I had a baby. That's what she said. So getting away from the whole social media thing granted you know she was on wild and out so and she was on tv so she had to keep up a certain image obviously but like when we think of like the everyday people and like the everyday woman you know it's like how can like us men you know support our women and say hey you look all right i brought this up here on the show before i don't mean ran it on too long but like i think a big problem in the united states is that we have a big problem with body dysmorphia that people don't want to talk about because people are so always want to talk about what they don't like about themselves, you know, and it's always, well, I got to fix one thing. Now I got to fix another thing because I don't like this. I don't like that. And they're trying to reach this, reach this psychotic idea of perfection, which isn't realistic. Well, like body dysmorphia and stuff like that. That's, that is really like a mental, it's like a mental illness and it is, Uh, um, I think part of it is part like nature, like who you are and it's part environment, right? Mm -hmm. Um, you might already just be feeling a little bit down about yourself just in general before you start doing all this, but then you look out in the world, then you, not in the world, in the United States and you look at these women who are, and the, and a big part of it is a lot of people, women don't understand what these women do to achieve the looks that they have, to be as skinny as they are, to, you know, be even as muscular as you are. These women and, you know, I'm not um, taking a shit on that, but you literally you can't really live life like you want to. It has to be very regimen, very strict, Mm -hmm. very this. You have women that are super skinny that do not eat. um, And, you know, snort Coke and pop all these pills and do all this kind of stuff. So we don't really, everybody is struggling in some capacity And I just think it's unfortunate that women are held to such an unattainable standard that we will go through great, that we don't even like ourselves. Do you know we have grown to hate our stretch marks? A lot of women, I don't care how many women are like, embrace my stretch marks. You nobody wants stretch marks, right? And it's such a natural part of. I do. Yeah, you love it all. It's such a natural part of being a woman, being a mother, all of that kind of stuff. But I don't know. It's it's just it's sad. Well, I'll uh, make a couple, and I'm guilty of everything. Comments as well. What you, uh, I will pick myself apart. Right. A lot of that is from the standards. A lot of that is from just the way everything is, what people think is um, reality, right? But what you said earlier is really the truth. People don't understand what it takes to to do anything, right? Everything that we see nowadays is a highlight film, but nobody, and, and this is just a sports analogy, right? So don't, <laughs> don't be mad. People don't see the, the days, the, the, the practices- the all the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into what you're presenting now. It goes the same for the way you look in most situations. Right. And it's not just for people that's doing it natural. I don't think there's anything wrong with having work done at all. I don't think there. I don't think I so don't at think all. There's anything wrong with it? I mean, I had a my fuck. I had implants. Right. I had a fucking fat transfer to but my boobs to because I is, didn't want to not have any and feel people want to have that done, but you're cutting corners. You don't have the money to do it. You don't have the money to do it properly. You don't take care of it. All these different things. It takes a lot to look good. It takes a lot to, to be rich. It takes a lot to be a good athlete. It's all these things that fall under the same umbrella. Everybody wants to be 
at this level, but don't want to do at this level work or pay mm -hmm. at this level money. So it's a, um, a, a, a science to it. It's levels to it. People don't understand. Everybody wants the instant gratification, but that's not real life. That's fake. That's in movies. Things happen right away. And what? just because it's the next uh, scene um, and you go from looking this way and you look this way now, it doesn't work like that. There's a lot that goes on in between. Like I've been talking to Marcus, we perceive ourselves through the eyes of others and what, you know, society says is good. What these songs say is what is should be the standard, all that kind of stuff. And you can say that, oh, I don't I'm good. I don't pay attention to all that kind of shit all you want to. But that shit seeps in. It you, is there. It's a fight. It's a constant fight. You Whether do have you to have so the self-talk, though. Self-talk is a real thing, though. You have to tell yourself, I'm good enough. I look good. Even though I'm not what um, this is going on in the music videos or what I'm seeing on social media or what I'm seeing, you know, down at the beach, you got to talk to yourself. I'm good enough. I'm normal and my man likes it. That's what I was going to talk about, Kale, because you asked a question about what can us men do. It's really not much we can do, but what we can do is be consistent, right? And that's with our words and that's with our actions. We love our women. Come up to you women, enjoy her body. Um, just be 100% in. Yeah, there's all these other things going on out in the world, but this is your lady, so consistently feed into her, man, and try to make her feel good about herself. That's our job. That's what we... Um, should be doing. Or that's just what I feel, right? It might not be for everybody, but us as men, we can't change the mind of a woman, but we can be consistent and we could be something that they can count on. All of society is telling them, okay, you're not good enough, but they could always look at us and be like, okay, I know my man likes it. Like and that's how it should Kel be. said, right. it doesn't matter what you say. That's what I said. It doesn't and matter, but that's where I, my point all is we can do now is be consistent. It's though. women tearing down women it's women judging women even more harshly than men at this point we've been groomed by society by men what are what but isn't there that, that, that thing we've always talked about how like you know how like women say you know oh men will fuck anything you guys don't care you'll fuck anything well i, they I will, feel though. like what yeah no but i feel like in, in, in some parts like Obviously, there's men that do care, but a lot of men, I don't think, really care. And I think, I know, like, yeah, so who is it really for? But that's I think what I get I'm what saying. You get it yeah. started with back in the day, you know, the objectification of women and the exposing of their bodies and women thinking that's how it should be. But now you're right. Men, a lot of men, maybe even majority of the men, probably don't care. But now it's women judging women. Women. Yeah, and that true. is where it's oh you know it's oh she had a she just had a baby look at her she still it's been nine months and she's still carrying a pa that's the kind of shit we do to each other and it's pretty fucking sad and that's yeah. why we're on the tables trying to get everything sucked out and it's not and it goes beyond plastic surgery that's why we're starving ourselves that's why we're doing all of these things this was a good conversation, you guys. I we got, so you know, Jess was back this week and we got her off. I got her all fired up. Like I like to get Jess her all pissed back. off. That's why, that's why I know I did my job. <laughs> uh, I'm not no, mad. This good, I'm really sad because of yeah. instances like Jackie O or tragedies like Jackie O because it yeah. is very common. We just don't hear about it. Right. That's real. So that's yeah. real word truly unruly with marcus and jessica trufant this was such a great episode it was i, th I think it was very uh educational I and we agree. were very serious we were. we were very serious this time around but mm -hmm. it was good that's different for uh, us marcus trufant jessica trufant <laughs> my name is kel of course you can follow the page on instagram truly unruly underscore podcast uh, if you want us to answer any of your questions too about your relationship or maybe you're at home and you're having 
body issues with your spouse and you want us to enlighten you and, and kick you some game, you can email us at truly and really underscore podcast at Gmail. Of course, listen to us on your favorite podcasting platform and catch the visual on YouTube. Just search Truly Unruly or search the man himself, Marcus Trufant, and catch us every Sunday on Converge. Boom. I think I got it. Hey. All right, y'all. Till next time. Peace and much love.